Hey what's up guys, welcome to the tutorial number 4 of this series Unity Shader Graph. I hope you had some amazing holidays and I hope you have an amazing year as well. And today we are going to see how to create snow, moss and even a wet effect with this shader. That's right guys, this is an amazing way of rapidly generating some kind of material accumulation on top of rocks, on top of a house or a road or pretty much any object that you need. And by the way guys, this is all available on my Patreon page and in case you are interested in supporting me, you will get access to a lot of visual effects assets for your game, links in the description. So let's see how we can create this shader. And the first thing we are going to need is a PBR shader that we can rename to Rock Moss for example and we can double click it to open in Shader Graph. And once we are in Shader Graph, you can leave these options as they are, like Metallic Workflow, Opaque Surface and Alpha Blend. Now, this shader requires a few textures to work out and a 3D model so we can test this. And in case you need resources to follow along this tutorial, I have made available for free in my Patreon page these rock models, the moss, the snow and the rock textures as well. The links in the description. Now back to Shader Graph, the first two textures we are going to need are the Rock Diffuse and the Moss Diffuse. Let's add it right here in the Properties panel and we can rename it to Rock Diffuse and Moss Diffuse. And by the way guys, these are just names, the Rock Diffuse could be your character Diffuse or Roof Diffuse and the Moss could be Snow or Wet Texture, it's just a label. Anyway. Let's drag and drop both of these textures to around here and create the sample texture 2D that we can search with spacebar key just like this and we can also add another one for the moss diffuse too. And as you may notice the moss is going to influence the rock diffuse in this case which means we need some kind of ratio, some kind of factor, we need an interpolation and we can use a lerp node spacebar again to search for it and add it and the lerp node will let us basically interpolate between a the rock diffuse and b the moss diffuse let's just choose the stone texture for the rock diffuse and assign the moss texture too however after you connect them we still have this t option left open and let me just add a vector one to show you that zero is the rock diffuse texture only and as we start progressing towards the value of one it will lerp and it will interpolate to the moss texture as you can see and this is quite a nice effect but this isn't enough for what we are trying to achieve so let me just remove this vector one and let's come to around here to create a normal vector this node will give us a normal vector according to the space selected in the drop-down menu. And I will show in a moment what this can do. This is better shown than explained, but for now, let's leave it as world. The next most important node is the dot product. Here's a good representation from ShaderForge node wiki of what the dot product does, which I will also explain in a moment what it does. Let's just connect the normal vector to B and let's also add a vector 1 that we are going to call up node or up value. Let's switch it to a slider with 0 for the minimum and 1 for the maximum. And let's set a default value of 0 0.5. Now connect it to dot product and connect the dot product to the lerp node and also connect the lerp to the albedo. Alright, cool. And let's see how this is going in Inspector, but first, let's just add this shader to a drop-down menu so things get more organized. And in my case, I'm gonna rename this to gap underscore sg. Let's press save asset and let's press right-click in our shader to create the material. And now if you come here to this drop-down menu, your shader now is in another drop-down menu that you name it, which is cool, right? Alright, so let's just create a sphere to see how our shader is coming up and we can drag and drop the material just created to the sphere and yeah, we have these small artifacts that we are going to solve in a moment. Anyway, now we can start seeing the dot product in action. 
it's starting to lurp between the rock and the moss texture. And basically, the dot product returns 1 when both of the given vectors are in the same direction and returns 0 once they are perpendicular. So all the values that goes between 0 and 1 will let us control the amount of blend between the rock and the moss, which is what is creating this effect. And that was my attempt at a simple visual explanation. And now to fix this glitch, we need a clamp node so that we can limit the output values of the dot product. And we can clamp to a minimum of 0 and a maximum of 1, it should be fine. So let's replace the lerp connection, like this, and that's it, that little glitch now is gone. We don't output any negative values anymore. And I also want to show you what happens when we switch the normal vector to view. And the effect now, it's quite interesting, the moss will follow the point of view, which in this case it's the camera. Nice stuff. And the world option will make sure that the moss is always on top, it's always facing the normal vector of the world, as you can see. However, wouldn't it be cool if we could control from which side the moss or the snow starts to grow? Well. That's as simple as multiplying the normal vector output with a vector tree that we can add here and call it moss offset. Let's drag and drop it here and add a multiply node so we can multiply it with the normal vector and replace the dot product connection. And if we save this, we can go back to the inspector and we have a bit more control of where the position of the moss is going to be, which is quite useful and cool. For example, it's useful for when we want to make sure that the snow hits the rock from this side, or from that side, or from the back, or from the top. You have much more control now. Anyway, we still don't have much control on the moss or the snow fall off, the fade, basically. And to have more control over that, we can create a vector1 that we can rename to level with a default value of 1 and multiply this vector1 with the output of the dot product node, like this. Now this will give us this kind of control, like a fade basically. And we can still improve this control with the power node. Let's again create a new vector1, which we can rename to contrast, with a default value of 1 for now. And let's also add a power node with spacebar, just like this. And let's connect the multiply to A, and the contrast to B of the power node. And don't worry about this pink color for now, we are going to fix it in a moment. And we can replace the connection to clamp. So yeah, that pink color that we have seen in Shader Graph, it's really messing up our shader in the bottom part, in the lower part, but let's focus on the upper part. And if you play around with these values, you will notice that the level controls the fade and the contrast controls how much that edge is going to be sharp which is awesome and useful. And yeah, we need to limit those values, by the way. But first, to fix that part under our sphere and rock, we only need to set a very small positive value on the minimum property of the clamp node. Something like 0.01, .01, even less if you want. And that should be enough to solve this problem. Anyway, let's change the level property to a slider now and set a minimum of 0 and a maximum of 10, which should be enough. And we could do the same for the contrast, but this time with a maximum of 25. At least that's what works for me. Now let's save this and head back to Unity, where we can see that our shade is working well and it's almost done too. The only thing is missing is that if this is for objects like rocks, character, roads, etc, etc, we still want to make sure we apply this blend method to properties like gloss and normals, at least. 
and it's fairly easy since the art part is done already. For example, for the normals we are going to need a text 2D for the rock normals and for the moss normals as well, just uh, like this. Let me just drag this to below the respective diffuse textures and also choose the respective normal maps of the rock and then the moss. After this we can drag and drop both textures to around here and select these two sample textures to denote so we can copy and paste with Ctrl C and Ctrl V. Drag around here and connect the respective textures. Let's also copy the lerp node, but for the normal maps we still want to control how intense they are. So let's create a normal strength node for each texture. Connect them like this. And oh yeah, sorry, let me replace this with the moss normal map, my bad. Alright, now we need a vector one for the rock normal strand and another vector one as well for the moss normal strand too. Let me drag it here. Add another one. Yeah, default value of one like this. And connect them to the respective nodes. Now we can connect them to the lerp like this and all we need is the output of the clamp that we use it for the diffuse. And that's it, we just need to connect it to the normal input of the PBR master. So that's it for normal maps. For the gloss it's pretty much the same process. We can copy paste this sample text to 2D, we Ctrl C and Ctrl V, add two textures to d in the properties panel, one of them for the rock class, drag it around here and select the texture as well. And the other one for the moss gloss. Alright, cool, let's connect them to this sample texture to the nodes. Copy paste the alert node again. Connect both textures. And also the clamp output like this. And now before connecting the lerp to the smoothness input, we also want to make sure we can control the gloss amount of each texture. And it's as simple as creating a multiply node. So we can multiply the rock gloss texture with a vector 1 that we can add here. Rename to rock gloss trend with a default value of 1. And also add another vector one for the mass gloss strength. Let me just rearrange this. And now we can connect the rock gloss strength to this multiply. And do the same for the mass gloss as well. Just replace the connections to the lerp. And now we can connect this lerp to the smoothness. Cool. And you could do the same for the metallic, but in my case I'm only going to create a vector one to control the metallic property, like this guys. And let's save this and head back to the inspector. And all we have to do is assign the respective textures to their slots, like this, and we are good to go. You can play around with these values and adjust them to your own needs, to your character, to your house, to your world, to your object. And that's pretty cool, right? I really like the idea behind of this shader and it can be useful when creating some level design, some even some game mechanics and of course for visual effects too. It really depends on the final goal you have. And you can still make it look like it's wet. As you can see, all I did was duplicate the original texture of the rock, made it darker in Photoshop and replace the moss diffuse, normal and gloss maps. Then I increase the gloss strength and it feels like it's wet, it feels like it has been touched by water. It's a pretty cool and useful shader. Anyway guys, I hope you have enjoyed this tutorial. If you are able to support me on my Patreon page, you can get access to a lot of shaders and effects assets for your game, 
go check it out, it's really worth, links in the description. And a special thanks to all the Patreon supporters of the last month that supported me, you guys rock. Thanks for watching and see you in the next video.